Police in Beverly Hills, California are investigating anti-Armenian flyers that have been posted all throughout the city. The flyers make reference to, well, the Armenian genocide in some of the worst ways you can imagine. So Beverly Hills Police Department announced that it was investigating the placement of anti-Armenian flyers around the city ahead of a scheduled demonstration organized by the Armenian Youth Federation to protest Azerbaijan's ongoing blockade of Artsakh. Now Artsakh is what Armenians call it. It is internationally known as the Nagorno-Karabakh region. It is a contested region that internationally is recognized as part of Azerbaijan. It is historically Armenian. It was an Armenian territory until Stalin decided to hand it over to Azerbaijan and it has been a big point of conflict ever since. I should note that the majority of individuals living in that region happen to be Armenian because again, it was historically Armenian until Stalin handed it over. It's important to know that history. With that said, Let's take a look at the flyer. What did the flyer say? Azerbaijan, Turkey, Pakistan, Israel equals four brothers that will wipe Armenia off the map. And it ends with Inshallah. So whoever posted these flyers really did give the whole game away. Because you have Turkey and Azerbaijan and you know, their allies pretending as though the brutality that Armenians have been facing because of them has nothing to do with the fact that they want to engage in ethnic cleansing. But make no mistake about it, that is what they're engaging in. And I'm gonna prove it. So I wanna note before we continue, the reason why Israel is included on that list is because Israel has been providing weapons to Azerbaijan. There was a terrible war that broke out between Armenia and Azerbaijan back in 2020. I did extensive coverage of that on this show, so please go back and take a look at that. But Israel was one of the countries supplying weaponry to Azerbaijan to carry out that war. But I wanna be clear, that's the Israeli government, which is of course different from the Jewish people. So several Jewish groups did voice their condemnation of the disgusting and racist flyers that were posted. The Jewish World Watch actually tweeted about this as well, saying these hate-filled flyers are another painful reminder of how important it is to stand up and show our support for the people of Armenia, a people with a similar history of persecution to our own. That last part really hit home for me because it's true. When you think about what Jewish families and their ancestors had to go through because of the Holocaust, and then you also consider what Armenians had to go through with the Armenian genocide beginning in 1915, there's a lot of similarity there. So it would have been great if the Israeli government recognized that and avoided selling weaponry to Azerbaijan. It also doesn't feel so great knowing that you know my hard earned money in the form of taxpayer dollars go toward funding the military for Israel. And then they turn around and supply weapons to Azerbaijan so they can brutalize my people, it's great. Anyway, more from the Jewish World Watch. Today, Azerbaijan has again left the ethnic Armenians of Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh to suffer. For nearly 50 days, the illegal blockade of the Lachin Corridor has disrupted crucial food and medical deliveries to the region. Let us respond to this abhorrent act with action by, um, by contacting Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, urging him to help end Azerbaijan's latest aggression. So let's talk a little bit about what's being referenced there, which is the blockade. Because at this point, there is one main road that connects Nagorno-Karabakh and the Armenians living within Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. That road is incredibly important because without access to that road, if that road is blocked, they are unable to get the food, medicine and supplies they desperately need to stay alive. That is what the blockade is doing. Now, let's give you some more details. Now, we're gonna go back a little further in 2020. In 2020, in Bolden, with oil and gas revenue, Azerbaijan launched a successful attack on Artsakh. With the direct involvement of Turkey, Azerbaijan succeeded in overrunning most of the territory controlled by the Armenians. The war ended with a truce brokered by Russia 
that left Artsakh on a fraction of its historic territories, a single land corridor linking it to Armenia and the outside world. Then on December 12th of 2022, with the war escalating in Ukraine, the Azerbaijani government launched a siege against Artsakh's Armenian population by blocking the Lachin Corridor, inflicting collective punishment on 120,000 civilians. So the consequences of that blockade, which is ongoing, have been brutal. Let's watch. In Karabakh's regional capital, Stepanakert, shops are emptying now that the only road from Armenia has been closed. There is hardly any fresh produce at the market. At this children's hospital, one mother says there is a shortage of medicine. Residents say that Karabakh, which they call Artsakh, is under siege. They are asking for outside help. Many mothers of formula-fed children are horrified by going from pharmacy to pharmacy every day and not finding formula. We are horrified by the thought that our children may get sick because a number of essential medicines are completely missing. Now, there are political and economic motivations behind what the president of Azerbaijan is doing. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. But before I talk about the real motivations, let me just be clear about what Azerbaijan is lying about. They claim they need to do the blockade. They need to do the blockade because the Armenians living in this region in Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh are getting weapons from Armenia. Weapons are flowing from Armenia to this region in order to engage in military conflict with Azerbaijan, which is the most laughable thing I've ever heard in my life. Armenia in terms of military capability, it's the most asymmetrical war imaginable, okay? The only real ally Armenia has had is Russia, and Russia's really playing both sides right now because Russia has its own economic interests, and let's keep it real, Russia's a little busy right now invading other countries like Ukraine. So the idea that they're doing this because Azerbaijan is worried about their security is laughable to say the least. And here's the Armenian prime minister explaining just that. Of the Lachin corridor is a provocation. Its goal is a new military escalation. And there is no need to take steps that are desirable to those drafting the military escalation scenario. The aim of this provocation and escalation is to hide the obvious need for a political and official dialogue between Baku and Stepanakert and to remove this issue from the agenda. So, what's really going on? Why brutalize 120,000 people living in Nagorno-Karabakh? Especially after Azerbaijan was able to take over parts of Nagorno-Karabakh that Armenians had controlled or occupied. It's because they want ethnic cleansing, they want Armenians out of there, out of their sight. There's a political reason as well. Aliyev, the president of Azerbaijan is not a great president. Didn't really enjoy a lot of popularity until he decided to really get aggressive with this war. This is what a lot of international leaders who are unpopular tend to do. They start a war, they rally support, they pretend like, I mean, Putin's kind of trying to do that in Russia with the invasion into Ukraine and it's not working out well for him. But there's always a political reason for starting a conflict like this. But I think the economic reasons are actually a lot more interesting and little talked about. Because if you think that all Azerbaijan cares about is Nagorno-Karabakh and that they would never dare to violate the sovereignty of Armenia, I've got a bridge to sell you. You're the most naive person on the planet. Azerbaijan has already invaded sovereign Armenia in recent years. And I'll give you evidence for that in just a moment. But when I say economic motivations, what do I mean? Well, Azerbaijan wants a corridor that runs through sovereign Armenia to Turkey without any security checks or any issues from Armenia's government. Okay, so no country does that. Like the idea that you get to just build a corridor through a sovereign country without any pushback is insane. But guys, Armenia has 
This is this is the scary part. Armenia has really no power. Its top ally, Russia, is playing both sides. Russia is the one that brokered a peace deal between Azerbaijan and Armenia, but they're doing absolutely nothing about the blockade. And part of the reason why, in my opinion, this is a bit of speculation, is because Russia might potentially benefit from some of the business opportunities and trade opportunities that would occur if that corridor is built throughout across Armenia, giving Azerbaijan and Turkey an easy way to, to do business with one another. I have a feeling that Russia is, is looking for some potential benefits as well, because this added pressure, this blockade is adding more and more pressure for the government of Armenia to just say, okay, fine, fine. I mean, just lift the blockade, our people are dying in Nagorno-Karabakh, lift the blockade, we agree to the corridor. I have a feeling Russia is partly in on it as well. Again, that's speculation, but let's talk about the corridor itself. The Zangazur corridor, the Zangazur corridor is a concept for a transport corridor, which if implemented would give Azerbaijan unimpeded, unimpeded access to Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic without Armenian checkpoints via a province in Armenia. And in a broad sense for the geopolitical corridor that would connect Turkey to the rest of the Turkic world, thereby uniting it. And here's what Azerbaijan's president, who I referenced earlier, Ilham Aliyev said about not engaging in diplomatic talks, to maybe economic agreements with Armenia to make this happen, but basically force Armenia to follow or to follow his orders and allow for the corridor. This is a direct quote from the Azerbaijan president. The creation of the Zangazur corridor fully meets our national, historical, and future interests. We are implementing the Zangazur corridor whether Armenia wants it or not. If Armenia wants it, then the issue will be resolved easier. If it does not want it, we will decide it by force. Meaning you're gonna invade the country, which by the way, he already has. Let me continue with that graphic where he says, just as before and during the war, I said that they must leave our lands or we will expel them by force. And so it happened. The same will be the fate of the Zangazur corridor. And guess what? They've invaded sovereign Armenia. One example is May 12th of 2021. Azerbaijani soldiers crossed several kilometers into Armenia in the provinces of Sinuk. Um, occupying about 16 square miles of Armenian territory um, at a military parade in Baku, by the way, dedicated to the uh, victory of the Karabakh president uh, Aliyev called uh, the capital of Armenia, as well as Zangazur, that is uh, part of part of Armenia, by the way, uh, and Sevan which is uh, another part of Armenia, the historical lands of Azerbaijan, which is Complete BS. Let me give you his exact quote here. Yerevan, which by the way is the capital of Armenia, the current capital of Armenia, is our historical territory, and we, Azerbaijanis, must return to this historical land. This is our political and strategic goal, which we must gradually approach. They want to wipe Armenians off the face of the earth. When they're asked about it, by their Western allies, they pretend like it's all a lie. But they slip up every once in a while, Aliyev can't help himself. You think they care about children dying because they don't have access to formula in Nagorno-Karabakh? No, they wanna cleanse Armen ethnically cleanse Armenians. You know, Sometimes they're super transparent about it, as Aliyev was in that quote. So again, for anyone who is naive enough to think that the whole conflict just centered on Nagorno-Karabakh, you are one of the most naive people on the planet, especially given the history of Armenia, the Armenian genocide, and, and the violence and brutality that led to the death of 1.5 million Armenians starting in 1915 by the Turkish government, which still refuses to even acknowledge their part in the Armenian genocide. That's what's really happening. 
So uh, looking forward to the Beverly Hills police investigating those flyers. I'm sure uh, nothing will happen. And it's insane that <laughs> you have the United States pretending to be so concerned about the invasion of sovereign countries like Ukraine. When Armenia, a sovereign country, has already been invaded multiple times by Azerbaijan. But you know, Turkey is a NATO ally. That's why the United States government still refuses to acknowledge the Armenian genocide. And this is how the game is played. What can you give me? How can I use your country for my own benefits? And if you're not much use to us, you don't really care if you get invaded. That's the message that we hear from the United States government and the State Department. To be fair, Anthony Blinken says that he's very concerned, very concerned about the blockade. I'm sure you are. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.